Hi guys, welcome to Finding Altitude. And really the purpose of this is not only to find altitude, but also to be a little bit of a review of how to use protractors. At any rate, we should know by now that these shadow plots are made because this pointer here the, called the gnomon casts a shadow around this and we made a mark at the tip of the shadow. Well, we also know that this makes a triangular shadow. We can't really see it, but we know it's there. The only thing, if I wanna find out the altitude at 5.35 p.m., the only, I only need two things. I need to know the height of the gnomon, which is written on the paper right here, and I need to know the length of the shadow. And the length of the shadow was five centimeters, and the height of the gnomon is two. By knowing that, I can easily draw a triangle. If I know that the vertical leg of the triangle is two centimeters, and if I know that the length of the shadow is five centimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw exactly that size triangle. So I'm gonna come here and I am going to make a five centimeter horizontal leg because this was the size of the shadow that we actually saw in the paper. And then I'm gonna come here and I make a two centimeter high because that's the height of the gnomon. And then I just gotta connect this and notice I'm using graph paper because graph paper makes it really easy to make a right triangle. And that triangle right there is really the exact size as the triangle that this made at 5.35 p.m. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna make that same exact triangle, but I'm gonna make it pointing the other direction because I want people to see that it makes absolutely no difference what direction we draw this. So here I'm gonna make, again, there's the base, and here is the height of two centimeters. And here is our long leg. So I basically have two congruent triangles. They're both the size of the ones on the shadow plot, and they're both just pointing different directions. Now, when I wanna find the altitude, first of all, let's take a little bit of a look at some protractors because protractors come in all shapes and sizes but they all have some things in common and here's some various protractors here uh, that have different things in common and it's gonna be hard to get them all on screen here at once I'll see if I can do it one of the things all protractors have in common is all of them have some mark in the center of them this one's got it right there this one's got it right there. This one's got a little hole right there. This one's got a little hole right there. And this one has a little hole right there. They also have a line on the bottom that matches up. This one's hard to see, but it's right there. But it matches up with the 0 and 180. And I call that the baseline. This one, the baseline, is actually the bottom of that protractor right there. There's the 0, there's the 180. Here's the baseline on this one. There's the 0, 0, 180, so on. This one right here. Here's the baseline, and it always just kind of goes, here's this one, this is the baseline right here, goes through 180 and zero. So they, they have different looks, but they're all basically the same. So when we want to measure an angle for altitude, the first thing we need to do is decide what angle is going to give us the altitude. And remember, this leg is the side that's sticking up, which means the light must have been somewhere out there. So if we want the angle off the ground, remember this is the shadow itself, this is the ground, we always wanna measure that angle right there. And the way to maybe think of that is always, no matter what, the one that is horizontally opposite your right angle, no matter what. I get mistakes on tests where people start measuring these angles for the altitude, but that's not giving you the pitch or the angle off of the ground. This one is. Now, once you've found the correct angle that you want to do, let's zoom in here so we can see it, then it's just simply a matter of whatever protractor you take, putting this part that is on the baseline that's in the middle right on that point, line up the little line, hard to see there, line up that little line with one of the legs or your base leg, and then just look at this. Now, you can see the problem I'm going to have with this, and this is why I've asked you guys to get small uh, protractors because this is a little bit hard to read because the triangle is so much smaller than the protractor, but we can easily deal with that just by going back to our original line here. And making it go out like that. Now all of a sudden, 
that fits on the protractor really easy. And we have a choice. It says about, this is about 22 degrees or about 158 degrees. Hopefully we remember that we never have altitudes above 90. So we just throw away the big number. We have an altitude of about 22 degrees. Well, if I measure that with any of my protractors, there's another one. It's always 22 degrees. The type of protractor isn't going to change it. I got a whole bunch of different protractors here, and no matter which one I use, it comes out to, if I put it right side up, that is, it comes out every time to about 22 degrees. So it doesn't care what protractor we're using. The type of protractor isn't going to change that angle. There we go again, about 22 degrees. And then finally, with these very little guys, about 22 degrees. Now notice it also doesn't matter at all what direction we draw the triangle. Again, we stick the little part that's the centerpiece of that. We line up one of the legs. The horizontal leg works good. And now we look, and that is 22 degrees. And this fits really nicely on this small protractor. If I put it on a bigger protractor, then I'm going to probably want to extend the leg of this as well, because now it is getting kind of hard to see. This one is actually very hard to do because it goes way off the side of the paper. So that one is a little more difficult to do, but it would, oop, if I do it right, it won't. So anyway, rate, there and now I put it on correctly. There's the center. And again, I still would want to extend that, but we could actually do that with this one. So let me actually do that. Extend it out to 22 degrees. So once again, for our protractors, you're always going to find that center point on your protractor. A lot of them have holes in them right there. This one has a bunch of stuff. That goes right over the angle you're measuring. You line up the baseline with the bottom of your triangle, like so. And then all you got to do is read the altitude or the degree by, this one's hard to get on there, by coming up here and reading the smaller of the two numbers. And that is it. Okay, the small protractors are helpful because all of our triangles after today actually are going to be small. Today's triangles are kind of practice ones, so we made them a little bigger so any of the protractors will work. Hope everybody finds this helpful. Happy measuring.